Well, afterward, Moses and Pharaoh, Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let this be. In the name of Jesus, let that cane be gone. In the name of Jesus, let these eyes be opened. In the name of Jesus. We've all done it. No. We've all been there. And, and, and notice what it says. Lest says the Lord, God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a fat feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. When you decide to take back what the enemy has stolen, be prepared to do battle. Be prepared to defend the Lord your God and His Word. Who is God that I should obey His voice? If that isn't the voice of the world today, I don't know what is. Who is God? What is going on? How come I'm facing this trial? Why is this thing happening to me? Why am I going through this? How come, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. I, I have divine nature. Why am I going through this? And all those words come in your mind. All those thoughts come in your mind. And you've got to fight them off. Just like Mike was sharing. You've you got to fight them off. And you've got to grab a hold of the Word of God. And today we have churches around America, across the world, that know very little about the Word of God. So the enemy comes along and he starts to talk to you. Did he really say that? Are you, are you sure that's what it means? How many, I've been, I believe the last two weeks, these last two weeks I've had more, more negative thoughts go through my mind than I've ever had in my life. When you're laid out on that crazy thing they have there and all these machines are going around you buzzing and humming and doing you're on, you're thinking, oh God, what am I doing here? And it looks so strong, it looks so powerful, and it, and it is. And I tell you right now, I thank God for the knowledge that they have. I, I mean that. I, I thank God. I thank God for the pill I had of, that took away the pain. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I can understand. I can understand why people kill themselves when there's no hope. But see, I had hope. Yeah. My hope was in Jesus Christ. Amen. Didn't matter what happened because I knew if anything happened, I'm going to go see the Lord. Okay, I'm going to see the Lord. But I didn't want to leave my wife. No. I don't want somebody else coming in there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Be prepared to defend the Lord. Be prepared to hang on to the Word of God. You say, well, Lord, I'm going to come against this. Be prepared. Be prepared to hold on to the Word of God. The enemy, his, the enemy, his pet saying is, has God indeed said that? Are you sure you understand that right? I, I, mean, I mean, after all, it's 2,000, 4,000 years old, you crazy fool. Isn't it past? I mean, isn't this a new age? Isn't this a new day? Look at the machines. Look at the doctors. Look at the hospitals. I mean, my God, my God, my God. No! I believe the Word of God. I believe the Word of God. There are times when you're being trusted and God knows it. Sunday, Joe gave me a, uh, a little word. He just handed it to me and I put it in my pocket. And when I got home, I went in my office and read it. Just exactly what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. just Amen. Exactly. That's the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Why the trial? Okay, we could go that argument. Why the trial? Then God just take it away. He's got a plan. And there's something about this trial that you're going through that he's going to work this out. All things work to good, together for good for those that love the Lord. He didn't bring it on. He doesn't want it on. But he's going to make good out of it while it's there. Don't get mad at him. I don't want to tell you. That's easy to do. That's easy to do. As you war... Listen not only to the spirit, but to your closest confidant, your spouse in many cases. What I pray for in hours, Donna tells me in minutes. That is so depressing. Yeah. 
I got out of my office and spent two or three hours down on the floor. Hear nothing. I go upstairs and she says, Do you, uh, you want to look at this thing I read in the paper? And she'll show me things. That's the answer. You got to have a wife. Number two, Exodus 5. Look at the, the sixth and eighth verse of this. Exodus 5, 6 to 8. So the same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no longer give the people straw to make brick as before. Let them go out and gather straw for themselves. And you shall lay on them quotas of bricks which they made before. You shall not diminish it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Expect a counterattack. Expect a counterattack. That doesn't mean you have failed. It means you have gotten to the enemy's nerves. He's going to come at you. He's going to come at you. He's going to attack you. This is a war. This is a battle. This is a spiritual war. Demons, spirits, angels, spirit of God, Holy Spirit. If there any of you can get you to see how hopeless it seems or how bad it can be, we lost our joy. And that joy, that, see, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible is very clear about that. The walls of Jericho fell down when they shouted a proud, joyful shout of victory. Then the walls come down. They had done all the walking, faith walking and going around the buildings and the walls, but it was that shout. And let me tell you, sometimes it's not easy to shout in a trial, is it? Can I hear amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes you're just hanging on. You're just hoping that something good will happen and something will change. And let, let, me, let me just say this. Uh, trials don't last forever. They pass. They pass by. They, they go on. Another one comes. <laughs> joyful doesn't always mean the problem is gone. It means you're joyful because you know He will go through with you. Let's just shout a victory shout. Just shout, shout it out. Amen. Nothing has changed, but your attitude has changed. Your heart has changed. The Word of God says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by your name. You are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God. Fire always precedes the miracle. You're not going to see a miracle sitting over here on a soft sofa. You're going to have to get into the war. You're going to have to get into the battle. You're going to have to get into the trials. But let me tell you this. Fire always precedes the miracle. But the miracle will come. Number three. It's Exodus 15. Uh, no, Exodus 5, excuse me, verses 13 and 14. Listen to what it says. And the taskmasters forced them to hurry, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily quotas, when there was straw. Also the officers of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters set over them, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not fulfilled your task in making bread? Well, yes, both yesterday and today as before. Prepare for that counterattack. Prepare for that counterattack. See, in war, the wise general always is prepared for a counterattack. A counterattack means an attack made in opposition to or in reprisal for a previous battle lost. Get a hold of that now. A counterattack is an attack made in opposition to or in reprisal for a previous battle lost. <laughs> 